I like, click, subscribe, do whatever you want time it is, it's Netflix time. Another untold story, this is called Crime and Punishment. Crime and Penalties, my bad. This is a hockey team ran by a 17 year old son. Let's just get into it, spoiler alert, let's just get it. So we got this guy named Jimmy, feared and respected, chilling out in Dansbury, Connecticut. He talked to a guy by the name of Richard. He owned the UHL Hockey League. He looked at his credentials and thought everything was all good when it came to the money. Then he was told Jimmy's son is going to be running a hockey team. His son goes by the guy by the name of AJ. So he told himself, what the fuck is going on? Richard had no idea what he was getting himself into. But let's just start from the beginning, shall we? Jimmy was very well respected in the community. But people was telling us they thought he had mob ties. Now, allegedly... The Sopranos got their idea from Jimmy and his boys. And he already had an autographed picture from them. Once again, the rumor is alleged. I cannot deny or confirm that. And they actually get to sit down and talk to Jimmy himself. Now, apparently he ran some type of trash company. One of the biggest trash companies in the world. And even back in 1999, he was under investigation. But FBI couldn't get nothing off of him. Then he talks about how he wants to spend time with his family and stuff like that. AJ's his son. Now, AJ likes Ninja Turtles and Batman. How can you hate on that? Now, AJ was a wrestling fan at heart. Hell, he even at a pool party with The Rock. Triple H, Badass Billy Gunn, and China. So clearly these niggas had ties and they had dough. And then Jimmy seen a movie called The Mighty Ducks, you know, with Mila Estevez and all that. AJ's lover quickly began to go for hockey, as opposed to wrestling and football. Meanwhile, you had a guy by the name of Ed Davis who was part of FBI investigations, but he ain't getting nowhere with Jimmy like he thought he would. Around that time, he had helped lock up Joe Gotti, Teflon Dawn, and all that. At some point, the FBI still had Jimmy on the hit list. So let's follow with the jail for a little bit, but he ain't go there long. Then AJ, when he got older, actually decided to play hockey for himself until he messed up his leg. And the doctors told him he could never play hockey again. And this is when his father got the idea of sponsoring the team and letting AJ run it. They called themselves the Dead Barry Trashers. It was a big deal. Hell, ESPN and Sports Center was covering all this shit. And the time frame for this happening was back in 2004. And the first sign he they had was Wayne Dretzky's brother. Brent Dresky, I think. So there's a group of people getting it popping, even though the FBI was still in the case. So even though they wanted to be in the HFL, NHL, my bad, they played for the UHL, the minor hockey league right under it. They recruited niggas like his old coach, Tommy Bone, T-Bone. They got an old hockey player by the name of Brad Winfield, who allegedly beat up six CO officers at one time. We got this guy by the name of one Eye Willie, Mr. James, who had an eye accident in NHL. And he got busy for them niggas too. They recruited these twins that have been playing since they were like four or five years old. They was giving away signing bonuses. Jimmy was giving niggas like 10,000 and shit off a of GP. And he had your team. Richard was like, we're gonna do this respectfully. I don't want you messing up or doing anything like that. We're gonna do it respectfully. Little did you know what was about to happen when he put these core group of crazy people together. The first day they, they game they had within the first three seconds, niggas stopped the beef and they were smacking niggas around. The fan eight, fans ended up, they loved it, and they ended up beating these niggas six to three. They was going crazy out there in these streets. They wanted to adopt the mentality of the Flyers back in the 1970s. You see this guy on the left? He was called the Nigerian Nightmare. The first Nigerian, I think, to ever play hockey. His squad was out there whipping everybody's candy asses, even though the news articles tried to paint him in a bad light. Nevertheless, they ended up winning the UHL Cup that year. Investigation still ongoing. And right off the bat, they portray Jimmy as some type of mob boss in this documentary, which he probably is. I can't deny or confirm that. You want to get a close-up on the Nigerian nightmare? There he is. Then in one game, Brad Winfield got severely injured and broke his leg or whatever. Gets the Kamazoo team or whatever like that, and they wanted to get revenge. He was out for a good majority of the time, and they didn't think he would ever play hockey again. They talked about, yeah, they found out where this dude lived. They like, hey, yo, Brad, what you want to do? You want to go get him? And he thought they was just kidding, man. That shit was nuts. Then even Jimmy got accused of hitting somebody in a penalty box. I was like, God damn, he hit a coach or something. Now this FBI officer, Ed, never even wanted to really take Jimmy down. He was actually giving him tips about, hey man, the FBI is on you, you know what I'm saying? Watch your back. Richard, the manager at first, was trying to fire people left and right or, you know, suspend them, find them, do all this other stuff. And then they won the cup. So it was like, all right, put him in a position like, yo, the fans love this shit. So you got to just give out the brush powder. Then from 2004 to 2005, we found out the real NHL had a lockout. So after they suspended two of Dan Barry's Trasher's best players, AJ went out to be like, yo, we got to find somebody to replace. So they ended up getting a legend in the sport, Michael Rupp. And they throw some money at him and he's all with it. Who had just recently won a Stanley Cup right before the lockout. Matter of fact, he scored the final score in the game. Meanwhile, FBI's trying to get recorded evidence of video footage and tape and stuff like that from the scrapyard, the trash heap. Meanwhile, the trash was so dominant, they even got a special appearance from John Cena when he had the U.S. Championship back then. And the stadium was packed 15,000 people in attendance. And they didn't win the Kabazoo game or whatever like that, but it was going off. All he wanted to do was win the Trash of the Championship. He said, all right, we're going to win the next year. Don't even worry about it. All of a sudden, everything started catching up to Jimmy. Police was getting a raid on, and they found stuff. They bust out Jimmy with evidence, and they also bust out another ball boss with evidence. Unexpectedly, they ended up catching the mayor on some cricket shit. But the crimes that Jimmy was facing, he could have faced up like 100 years. I don't know how he got out of all this shit, but he only ended up doing 87 months. The funny thing is, one of the few people that actually had his back was Richard. 
He held him down. He still has their jerseys to this day. Now, the trashers were disbanded, obviously, but AJ still wanted to find another route, so he started taking the boxing route, being a boxing promoter. Even Ed served as Jimmy's lawyer in this case. I was like, wow, you turned from FBI to serving actual criminals. That's just wild. Well, Jimmy was there on fraud, embezzlement, all types of stuff, but anyway, yeah. But Jimmy only did 87 months, he got free. Got to see his son for the last decade has been doing. Riding around in oil trucks, making a good, decent living life and all that. And was setting up for his boxing promotions. This guy ended up having a 10 round fight, got the win. And he wanted to go back and promote in the hockey ring just one more time when his dad was coming home. But the fight they had, he actually promoted it in that same arena. His dad's back home, they get up with their friends, they start talking about the good old days. Man, it's just a crazy ass time. Now I'm probably missing certain parts of it, I just want you to get the bare minimum of it. It's definitely worth a watch, you need to check that shit out. Untold Crime and Penalties on Netflix. Check that shit out. You already know what it is. Slick DJ on the easy miss. Stop. See, look at it. Ha 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 ha. Big. You got it slogan.